Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Perhaps you're visiting with us. We want to extend a welcome to you and trust that you benefit from what you hear today. We want to start with prayer this morning. We want to continue to pray for our country and our president. We also want to pray for our community and the Spokane area. And we want to continue to pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. Perhaps you have a special unspoken request. This is a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for all the benefits that you give unto us daily. God, we pray for our nation and our president and trust that you will continue to lead and guide his steps and navigate him in these troubling times. God, we also pray for our local community here that you will open up doors of opportunity that we can share this great message with our community. And Father, I pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church, every single person. We pray that you'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out your presence, your protection, and your provision. We ask all of this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said, amen. I want to direct us uh, this morning to um, the book of Job, book of Job, chapter number two, and just two verses of scripture, verse number nine and 10. It said, then said his wife, Job's wife unto him, does thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But Job said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. An important text, and using this text, I want to talk to us about disappointment with God. Disappointment with God. We're well acquainted with Job's situation here. We're getting a very rare glimpse of a situation that first originates in heaven. And it exists and begins with a conversation between God and the devil. Job is brought into this completely unbeknownst to Job. And in this incredible scenario that takes place, God is asking a question of the devil. Has thou considered my servant Job? And so this conversation continues and the devil is given certain privileges, perimeter, if you please, in which they can put Job to the test. Job, of course, before all of this transpires, he loses his children, he loses his possessions, and he loses his health. But the Bible said in all this, Job did not speak foolishly and did not lose his integrity. He kept his integrity, thus shutting the mouth and the claims of the devil. But in this incredible situation that takes place, and it is a rare view because it's not found anywhere else where this kind of conversation takes place between God and the devil and then God's man, Job. But in the midst of this incredible situation is Job's wife. She becomes completely overtaken with misery, with heartbreak, with complaint, with frustration, and ultimately probably bitterness. And she says to her husband, you should just curse God and die. 
And so in a very rare situation for myself, because I felt this in prayer today, I felt very strongly on my heart to talk about this. There might be somebody out there that is listening and watching this morning. I want to talk for a few moments about disappointment with God. In Sunday's message here, we talked about how that God established covenants with his men, most notably God established the Adamic covenant was established with Adam. The Noahic covenant was established with Noah. The Abrahamic covenant was established with Abraham. The Davidic covenant was established with David. The Mosaic covenant was established with Moses. Not at any time did God ever discuss this with their wives. Their wives were expected to follow obediently and they would only know of God's dealings through the lips of their husbands. And so here, Job is responding correctly, sitting in an ash pile, scraping his blisters with a pot shirt and his wife talks about cursing God and let's just give it all up and die. Whether we want to admit it or, or not, there are a lot of people and in looking back over the last almost 30 years of full-time ministry, I have come in contact with a lot of people that became disappointed with God. How does this happen? I think in Job's wife's case that given the pattern of how God communicated to his men and the lack of information and the lack of understanding and the lack of being able to put everything in its proper place and to fill in the proper gaps. I can see how that in the beginning, at least in the beginning of God's dealings in the word of God, how that women could live a life of pain and sorrow, not comprehending all of God's plan. And I wanna just stop long enough to say how blessed we are to have the word of God as a record and we can go back and see things in the full panorama of understanding and, and the word of God that they did not have. We are blessed. But perhaps I'm talking to somebody this morning that is disappointed with God. A few years ago, there was a book that was written by a famous Christian author by the name of Philip Yancey that wrote a book called Disappointment with God. And so it definitely has an audience. There are people out there that come to a place in their life where no doubt they would never want to utter it because it would appear to be sacrilegious to share your real feelings, but you're disappointed with God. I want to address a few things that will help you. Number one, I believe the very first reason why people become disappointed with God is unrealistic expectations. It is our responsibility to stay in the word of God. The Bible says that it is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When we start to bring human reasoning and human preference into our spiritual outlook and spiritual inlook, sometimes we can misunderstand what God's doing. And unrealistic expectations of how things were gonna work out, how it was supposed to be, and really what it comes down to is, is I simply did not understand what God was doing and what God was going to do. There were inappropriate boundaries. I put up one boundary, but come to find out that was not the boundary that God put up. And when that is the case, I need to recognize that God's boundary is the real and genuine boundary. And mine was just something that I put up out of ignorance. Sometimes the Bible says that you have not because you ask not. 
We can have unrealistic expectations when we don't understand God. We are blessed, as I've already mentioned, because we are given the entirety of the biblical record in which we can look through the unvarnished, unglossed over biographies and God-given record of how he dealt with people and how people dealt with God. 66 books that reveal these dealings. And so the way that I would address unrealistic expectations is the fact that we just do not understand how God works his ways and his will. But we can discover that if we scour and search and study and feed and live in the word of God. Number two, we have a inadequate perspective. We think somehow that because we have obeyed the word of God, and this is a very, this is a very common human experience, that people can think that because I maybe I did ask and it didn't happen, or maybe because I did a certain thing, I didn't get what I needed or didn't get what I wanted. It might just be that I need to go back to the word of God and expand my understanding and make those micro adjustments so that my perspective, instead of being like this, it could be like this. The Bible reminds me in this famous scripture in Romans chapter eight, that all things work together for good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. And so my limited perspective might just need to be enlarged to help me understand that there is a bigger picture and that my life is not really lived out in 60 second intervals called minutes, 60 minute intervals called hours and 24 hour increments called days. But there is a panorama, there is a bigger picture to my life, the good, the bad, the ugly, the mistakes, the triumphs, the joys, the pain, the sorrow, the suffering. Life is never encapsulated in just one emotion or one situation, but there's a bigger picture. There's a bigger perspective. To those of you that might've found yourself disappointed with God, I'm reaching out to you today. You are not a second-class citizen and you have not violated some great principle because you have these feelings. But I'm just here to let you know that there is a reason and there's a bigger picture that can help us to understand that God really is working everything out and God is in control. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is found in the book of Philippians chapter one, verse number six. It says, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will complete it. That's good news. There's a bigger picture, there's another posture, and tomorrow is another day. God bless you. I trust this has been a help to you because God has a purpose, a reason, and a plan for all things that come our way. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Bye until then.